plants are a blessing gift for us humans in bringing integration, healing, and remembering. And yet in our journeys as sensitives, we have been prone to being primed, sometimes in quite intense ways by early wounding, mostly because we feel so much and so deeply. So for many of us sensitives entering life in this plane, we may have experienced the impact of wounding experiences even while inside the womb or perhaps in that period when we just entered the physical body. Possibly in these initial bonding experiences, we may have experienced what is called now developmental trauma. Our very early experiences tend to configure what in my understanding, I like to call our core wounding. That core wounding experience that ends up driving us in many different ways towards compensation for that wound and eventually towards our purpose. So we experience that influenced by what may happen in the time within the womb when we may have felt some kind of rejection. Uh, there are experiences in the perinatal period that's right before birth, during birth and right after. And of course that time in the very first three years of age is a period after we come out of the birth canal of accelerated brain growth uh, uh, where so much of the conditioning within us is determined. And of course, the following years until we're seven to eight years of age. And I'll just show you a picture here that illustrates. This is a picture of me as a baby and uh, one of the things that I know and that I've been able to watch unfolding over the decades was the difficulty my mother had to attune to the feelings of a child. You can even see it in the picture. And when I was brought up, there was this theory that children should only be held when they needed to be fed and otherwise they should be left crying or you know, just learning to cope. And so developmental trauma is the word in use now for an experience that can be an ongoing experience during early development when the child's needs are not perceived when the child feels that their needs or who they are, that they're just not being considered. When there is neglect or perhaps invalidation of one's feelings. And of course, from there, from those more subtle lack of attunement and lack of perception experiences, we go on the whole range to the abusive forms of disciplining and controlling children that can be experienced as immensely traumatic. And so even when there is love, even when we were wanted, it can well happen that we so many times felt the agonizing feeling of not being sensed. And so bonding damages and attachment wounds are very important 
markings in the wounding of sensitive individuals and we all should be aware and learn more about it so this is what I, I like to bring this up we can have um, bonding disruptions in the early womb experience we can have bonding disruptions during and right after our birth and we can have also attachment wounds. And here are some resources that I highly recommend. There is an audio book by Diane Poole Heller, Healing Your Attachment Wounds, that is really a foundational piece of work in helping us understand. And this one, uh, Healing Developmental Trauma, not as foundational, but really important to understand developmental trauma in its context. And in a special way, I highly recommend you learn more about relational neuroscience, which has been an area of so much clarification for me as I learned to heal myself and become even more ready to share my purpose with the world. So I highly recommend this course. And the flowers, where do the flowers come in, in all of this? I have now come to see the flowers very much as being the faces of plants. And plants communicate and interact through the flowers and flowers are so relational. Everyone is drawn to flowers. Flowers interact very much in what we call the we space. And let's just feel them for a few moments. Because this tells us more than words can tell. So the moment of flowering is the moment in which the plant has in its apex, in its moment of maximum awareness of all its adaptation strategies, all that it has had to learn to change in color and shape, to adapt to its environment, to interact with its pollinators, to communicate with life around it. Flowers hold so much wisdom from the plants. And flowers hold archetypal knowledge. Knowledge of archetypal movements. And if we think that an animal, when if you think of a cat or a dog when they're sick and they just go outside and they kind of nibble on certain plants, we probably have the flowers that we're drawn to that might be at times the ones that we are needing to bring comfort to our despair. to bring elevation to the heaviness, to console our weary hearts, or to inspire 